But yeah, let's uh, settle in and check out Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, which I did not play the Wii game when it came out. At that point, I think I had moved out and the Wii stayed with uh, my younger brothers. But yeah, let me know how the volume is. Um, I think already by the sounds of it, I need to turn it up. How's this? This is full capture card volume. Yeah, this seems right to me. In my in my ears, it seems correct. Would you like to connect online? This will make your gameplay information visible to all other players around the world. Sure. Oh my god, Nintendo has started doing this now too. Wait, what? If you you can withdraw your consent at any time by changing your online settings either under options through Samurai Kirby 100. <laughs> Samurai Kirby 100. The heck is this? This is as loud as it goes, so you know, this is the capture card at full volume. I do enjoy Kirby games. They're just chill. They can have difficulty sometimes, but they're just nice little experiences. They don't overstay their welcome. Chat, have you ever heard, uh, the voice actress for Kirby? It is really freaky to see human sounds come out of the, the mouth of a human. Let alone a Kirby act voice actress. Like, Kirby sounds out of a human. I said human sounds out of a human. But Kirby sounds out of a human. That's what I meant to say. You haven't seen it? Okay, hang on. I, I have to find the video and I'll show it. It's not com it's not computerized in the slightest. She actually makes these sounds. Adventuring with Magalore? A visitor named Magalore has dropped out of the blue and landed on Planet Popstar. He's ready to lend a helping hand during your adventure. Oh, so this is just like, uh... Babby mode. Okay, before we get to this, um... I feel inclined to show you guys this. So, alright, check this out. Just a sec. Okay. 
Ready? This is Kirby's voice actress. <laughs> It's 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 so weird. It's like I I always assumed that the voice had some digital editing to it, but that's just it's straight up from a human. <laughs> it's just so it's so weird. <laughs> like, I mean, kind of incredible, but man. Anyway. Just now, now when I'm playing this and you hear the sounds Kirby makes. She had an annoying voice. That's not her real voice. It, it's just a sound she can make and it became the Kirby sound. If you believe someone actually talks like that 24-7, come on. She's got credits for other things and yeah, her voice does not sound like that. That's like saying, like, the sounds that I make for Warrior are like my real voice. Like, oh, yes, this is how I talk normally. I'm just putting it on so you don't think I'm weird. Oh, yes. Like, it's voice acting, dude. This looks visually nice so far. Again, I never played the Wii version, so I don't really have any commentary as far as how this compares to the original. They had a pro controller? Well, it's because I'm playing with a pro controller. Funny that. I don't like the Joy-Cons, I find the thumbsticks just too small for me, because I have large hands. Also, the, the drift thing, it's just, yeah. I have heard, though, there are kits you can buy now that, um, give you the same analog sticks that the Dreamcast controllers used. I, I, forgive me if I don't know the term, but it's effectively a different way of, uh, having the analog stick work, and it's one that isn't susceptible to drift. Like, it does wear out eventually. But it's it's certainly not to the extent of the current generation of uh, controllers, where all of them... They have a time, like... For some reason the Switch ones have hit early, but I've had the drift happen to the PS5 controller as well. So... It's just, that's just how all of them are going to be by design. It's weird because this pro controller I'm using, it had drift issues, but now it doesn't seem to have them. So, I, I don't know. But when I was playing Ghosts and Goblins, it, it was tilting me so hard because it was drifting and forcing me to move sometimes. So with some of the precision platforming, I was just dying. And, uh, yeah, it was not fun. Do you want to hear some shit is like, despite there being so many cases documented of like, drift issues, apparently Nintendo won the court case where, uh, people were trying to sue them. It was a class action one from memory over the Joy-Cons and they won the lawsuit because apparently in their license agreement they have some clause in there that basically removes responsibility from them. 
despite there being like a major issue. Whoa, Ultra Sword. This is like a smash move. This may have gone to waste. I mean, look it up for yourself. I'm, I might be not quoting it correctly, but they I know that, uh, yeah, they did win. Oh, it's like a rift. No, I would die, 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 hey! <laughs> I want my sword back. Okay, well. Someone tried to sue Nintendo? No. Um, it was like a class action lawsuit because people's joy c or controllers were drifting. Wait. Gotta be kidding. Because I sucked in air. I can't try again, can I? Okay, I can. Good. It's just one of those things where it's like. They are right in the sense that it can happen to all current generation controllers. But the part that people are taking issue was that it happened sooner than the rest of the current generation controllers. And they had to go to say that it wasn't a widespread issue when it was. I mean, again, this is just based off the lawsuit. You already ordered a replacement stick. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I mean, look, the fact that there's a process in place for it, it's kind of them having their cake and eating it too. It's kind of like acknowledging that yes there is an issue but not acknowledging it to the point where the lawsuit can go against them sphere duma again i'm not a legal person and i'm just kind of paraphrasing here but go read some articles on it and you'll see this the truth on it I haven't had my Joy-Cons mess up, that's the weird thing, but I've definitely had this Pro Controller, like, have issues. bought an 8-bit do ultimate controller it has whole effect sticks that can't drift plus the d-pad on the pro controller is unusable yes the d-pad i agree on the uh, nintendo pro controller is very problematic you get false inputs oh I, I messed up badly i didn't realize what this was until it was too late this is like the classic i have heard about that controller um the whole effect joysticks that's that's the technology that I was trying to remember the name of. Um, they had it in the the Dreamcast controllers, so it's not new technology. Create an issue, then sell the solution. Well, it's not Nintendo um, selling the solution. I guess, like, yes, that would be kind of scummy if it was, but it's not. It's just another company that, I guess, has just gone, hey, the technology has already existed. I'm sure there are, like, I, I don't know the hardware, and I'm sure the, there might be a technical reason why they went with these kind of analog sticks. But yeah, there is this downside to it, whereas in the other ones don't have that downside. It is really, really good. Okay. I mean, if this controller breaks, yeah, then... 
I'll definitely get one. The one thing I will say about 8-bit do controllers, or 8-bit do, however you want to say it, um, I have a couple. I will say that the plastic they use over time, it kind of gets scummy. I know that's that's a weird thing to say, but I haven't used mine in a while. And it kind of discolored and became like weird. I don't know how, to, how else to put it. They, they were fine, but yeah, like one of the Super Nintendo controllers that I haven't used for like a year. Um, it just has this weird feel to it now. That wasn't there when I first got it. But it's okay. Uh, now for a Super Nintendo controller, I'm actually using the controller that you get from Nintendo. Like they sell a Super Nintendo controller there. And it's worth the money because it has one of the best D-pads ever, so like... I've been using it for the Game Boy games, I've been using it when it's this kind of game, and D-pad control is an option. The sticks are the plastic housing. The plastic housing which then in turn kind of affects the stick. Because it affects the shell around the stick. That's the only comment I would say about the controllers that I've bought, which is the uh, SM30 Pro. And it's like... Okay, my Pro controller is older, and it doesn't have the feel that I'm talking about. Like, it just feels like the plastic is, is just dirty. I don't know how else to put it. It just doesn't feel right. And it's not like I don't take care of my stuff. Like, I have drawers to organize all my controllers and stuff. Like, they, they've they been housed the same way some of my other controllers have been housed. And, um, they just don't feel right. I don't know how else to put it. Like, it's one of these things where I would have to show you physically and be like, look, this is what I mean. Like, this controller's been stored pretty well, but this is how it feels. Keep an eye out for it. I think they paint shells. That is probably what I feel. Maybe. But I guess just compared to any other controller I've owned, that's it it's weird. Uh but yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a controller with a great D-pad, get the Super Nintendo controller from Nintendo directly. Like they'll go through periods where they're unavailable. It's a Super Nintendo controller, then it has two extra triggers on top, so... It doesn't have an analog stick, but for games that just use D-pads, oh man. I've said this before, but I really wish they would stop reinventing the wheel with the D-pad, like... I feel like we've... We've had controllers with perfect D-pads before. And then, when the new console come out, they just revise the controller and change the D-pad, just for the sake of making it look different. I don't know, just use the D-pad that people love, you know? For me, it's the Super Nintendo one. I think that's probably the best D-pad I've ever used. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. DS D-pads are hot. Yeah, actually, the DS D-pad was good, too. I'll give you that. That would probably be like a close second for me. Maybe it's like nostalgia as well, but I don't know. I feel like the Super Nintendo D-pad was really good. It's a nice big size and uh, it just feels right. I'll tell you which D-pad I don't like, <laughs> the Xbox controller one. I don't know, it just doesn't feel right to me. That's like, uh... Form over functionality. It's like, yeah, it might look visually nice, but... I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. So for me, right... 
my ideal controller would be the shape and the triggers of the GameCube controller, but then a D-pad from the Super Nintendo. And that would be my perfect controller. I think the GameCube controller is probably the most comfortable controller I've ever held. It's just the one thing that annoys me about it is the D-pad and probably the uh, other analog stick. But I mean, other than that... That would be my ideal controller. You really like the PS5 controller? I was a fan of the PS5 controller until it started doing the drift thing for me. And that was within a... Probably within a year of owning the controller. This new control... I got like a, a replacement controller for it. It's a purple one and it's been fine so far. But I guess until that controller lasts... Lasts me at least two years. I'm on the fence about the PS5 controller. In terms of how it feels... Definitely better than the PS4 controller. Big step up. But if it does the same thing the previous controller did, then... Yeah. I don't know. See, I, c I can do this. <laughs> I've done this before in other games. I just wasn't aware this was what it was. Yeah, Xbox, Xbox One controller has stick drift. Yeah, I mean... I find it wild that I have controllers that are 20 years old and they they still work perfectly fine. And these these new ones, like some of these controllers, they can't last even five years. You're using it for emulation and you can't use it for that. That's why you got the 8 bit do. Oh no, that 8 bit do controller, yeah. Like, from what I've seen, people are really happy with it so far. So, it's definitely a, a big upgrade. You know, the thing is, I've only really ever used emulation when I was a kid. Because, you know, affording new games was, was tough, right? But as an adult, I've tried to play original copies with real hardware as much as I could. There's of course certain things where you can't use original hardware, like in the case of ROM hacks, but even that, like I've bought flash carts so I can play them. What's this? Oh, cool. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with emulation, it's just it's a preservation thing at the end of the day. There's certain games that are just stupidly expensive to be able to do with OG hardware. I forgot what book it was, but this book had this excellent quote about piracy. And piracy is ultimately just a result of things being unavailable or available for not a good price. And that's why piracy exists. I mean, you'll still get it. There are some people that won't buy certain games ever, right? But, I mean, for the most part, it's generally just an issue of just... It's either not available, or it's available at a price that's just kind of bullshit. I think I messed up. Wait, it's weird how you never had a problem as a kid, what? You get weird motion sickness. Because of the lower frame rates? We were excited to get a Wii a couple years ago, tried to play Prime on it and physically couldn't. Yeah, that sucks. Have 
Have you got on your eyes check? Like maybe it's a thing where you need glasses or something. Assuming you don't already have them. I know that eventually I'm gonna have to wear glasses. My time hasn't come yet, but it's coming one day. And I say this because I wore glasses for like almost a couple of years as a kid, but then Oh. <laughs> then the problem corrected itself, apparently, so. But given that, I fully expect that sometime in the future I will have to wear them again. You have great close eyesight, but can't see beyond three feet. You do have glasses, right. Yeah, it might be related to that. Well, I have really good vision, like... Um... Because I did graphic design, or studied it, um, our teachers made us take, uh... There's this test you can take. It's a color test. And there's several versions of it online, but the gist of it is you get... A bunch of squares that have a particular color in them. And then you have to arrange them. Um, so they form like what a smooth color. So like left to right, like it might go from blue to red. And you just have to make it so it's like one smooth, seamless bar. And that's typically, a, a, you take that test so you, then you can see, okay. How good is your color vision? Um, so I was kind of worried that I'd fail that, but uh, no, I, I got perfect color vision. Apparently for men, um, it's, there's a pretty high chance that you don't have perfect color vision. <laughs> so, I guess I'm lucky. Like it's more likely that you'll uh, have some sort of bias to a particular color. You have really, really good color perception. You haven't had a color test question, you failed. I mean, you want to try one of the ones I'm talking about? It also depends on your monitor, to be fair, but... Um, it's... This is I think this is the one that I... That they had, uh... Okay, hang on. I mean, ignore it, but... Color IQ. I think this is one of the similar ones. Okay. You heard it was because women were gatherers, so they had to distinguish colors or get poisoned. Maybe it's an evolutionary thing. But it, there's definitely something to it, like... Men have a higher chance of having a, a color bias. You have a game you play that is like that test on steroid, called I Love Hue. Alright, I'm gonna check this out. A gentle journey into color and perception. The rain mosaics of colored tile. Oh wow, no, this looks hectic. Um... Yeah, I'm definitely bookmarking this for later. It doesn't matter if it's on mobile, I'm intrigued by this. It's super relaxing. Oh, I bet. It's like one of those oddly satisfying things. There's a game that I've been uh, meaning to buy, but I just, I haven't. Because there's a bunch of stuff that I want to play right now. And so it's just going to be added to the backlog, but um, it's called A Little to the Left. They showed it during one of the directs, but it's also available on PC. And the whole premise of it is just like... You get presented with a screen that's objects, and you just have to arrange them how you see fit. Okay, this is bothering me a little. So, one of them is like, there's a bunch of books, and the books have a pattern on their spine. But they're also different sizes, so it's kind of like, do you order them by size, or do you order them so the pattern on the spines line up? So it's just one of those things that's just oh, oddly satisfying to arrange stuff. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's not everyone's uh you know like to do that where's where's the key I haven't seen a key yet the only thing I can think of is here but I can't I can't drop like I tried pressing down it doesn't let me drop down I oh know this is this is going to bother me because with Kirby games I do go for for completionism. Maybe I need another power up. It's a Kirby game. Like I have to 100 percent it. Nope. Okay. Why do I get the feeling this is a one-way door and I've already messed it up? I mean, the arrows would indicate, yes, that you have two ways of coming out of this door. But I don't see a key either, so it's like... Okay, what have I what have I missed? This is where you come out, so Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Whoops. I did not see anywhere that had a key. Um... You got a zero on that test? That's good. That means perfect, right? A high number is bad. What if it's one of these scenarios where I have to drop down the pit? Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the camera didn't follow me, so it's not that. Alright, I might just have to redo the stage. Ugh! Already. But, if this was a case of me falling down there, the camera would have followed me. Oh wait, what if it's just this? Hang on. Hang on. Festival. What? <laughs> what was that? Oh, oh, nice, nicely done. I blame the festival. I was thrown off. Oh! Oh, I see. Oh god. <laughs> Give me the key. Okay, that's what happened. Alright. Mystery solved. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't realize it was a race. All right, good. The Metroid Prime remastered as a stable 60 FPS. Oh man, I wish all Switch games were like that. That must feel so nice to play. Well, I'll be finding out uh, next... Is it next week or the week after? But... Whenever I get the physical copy. It's pretty much gonna be I'll finish Kirby and then we'll do Metroid afterwards, so... It's gonna be a fun time. 
I haven't played that game. I've only played the uh, three. So I am looking forward to it. This is classic curb. So you know something I've realized with this is I can use the Super Nintendo controller to play this because it does have D-pad input support. There's no... Yeah, there's... I can actually play this with a Super Nintendo controller. There's no button that is required, really. You know what? I might do it. <laughs> Hold on. Um, I need the cable. Where's the cable? Cable is here. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, and then... There we go. All right, now it's a Super Nintendo controller. Yeah, this feels better. <laughs> it's still showing, uh... It's still showing, like, a pro controller, but... We are doing Super Nintendo controller mode. Unlock the OG concept art and read art master concept art. I'm glad that they gave that game the treatment it deserved. And they didn't do something like what they did with uh, the Mario 3D All Stars. That was. They could have done so much with Mario 3D All Stars. Given Mario 64 like a really good, a really nice treatment, and they didn't. They were just like, yep, just wrap it in an emulator and then. They can play, like, the soundtrack. Whatever. Call it a day. Limited edition. Cause a false sense of FOMO. so funny because there's just so many copies of the physical version of that game floating around. There was really no need to rush and buy it, buy that cutoff. I still see copies of that game in storefronts, despite it not being sold technically anymore. Oh. It's like a fancy umbrella. to run out. Or is this just a checkpoint thing? No, it, it ran out. I love how the Waddle Dees just be chilling. Off. 
So, I mean, I'm not much on Kirby lore, but what's up with the Waddle Dees? Like, in some games they are friends, but then in others they're enemies. Like, what's the go with that? To be honest, I've never paid attention to the Kirby lore. Yeah! Burn it all to the ground! Oh, that's cool. That's all. Scorched Earth policy. It's a void thing. Okay, before we do the void thing, let's just make sure we get this. Trying to blow air into them. <laughs> ah! It's okay, it lets you retry. It's fine. I should have done better. No. Oh. You can shoot backwards to buy us off time, that's cool. Hey! <laughs> this is a cool power. Kinda reminds me of the Mega Man item. Leaf shield. So much better the first time. <laughs> I can't help but picture the voice actress now. I reminded myself of, uh, just what a human looks like making Kirby sounds. Thank <laughs> you. 
Gee, I wonder who this could be. It wouldn't happen to be that tree that appears in every single Kirby game. I don't mind. Stamp tickets can be redeemed for stamps in Merry Margo Land. Collect stamps to get special souvenirs. Maybe later. What is this music? Oh no, fi I think fire. That makes sense, right? Fire against the tree. This is classic. I mean, even with that, it's not catastrophic. Just. No! Oh! <laughs> Still got me. I thought I was safe. Yeah, I'm being very careless with this. I'm kind of just <laughs> spamming. It's okay. There's no reward for doing this perfectly, I don't think. This uh, game apparently has an epilogue you can play, or a prologue, that's, uh, that wasn't in the original, so we'll be checking that out as well, eventually. You did it, Kirby. My ship has its oars back. Thank you so much. I'm counting on you to find the other missing parts. Keep up the good work. And don't forget to keep an eye out for all those energy spheres. If you collect enough broken doors within my ship... Wait. If you collect enough, the broken doors within my ship will reactivate. There you go. There are some really cool sub-games you can play with your friends. What if I don't have any friends? <laughs> Not to mention copy ability rooms with all kinds of copy abilities to try out. And there are several challenge stages that will really test your skills. If you find enough energy spheres, reactivating those, those will be a breeze. So whenever you see one, be sure to grab it. Wow, you already found 13 energy spheres. Way to go, Kirby. You've act reactivated the door to a challenge stage. It's over in the room to the right. Why not give it a try? Oh boy. That one. Okay. Can you reach the goal before the time runs out? Okay. Kirby sword can cut ropes. Upward slash above. Reach the goal. Okay. Go, go, go! This feels like a, like a Smash Brothers bonus stage. Penalize pretty bad. <laughs> oh, that's unlucky.
Why'd I do that? I thought the platform was going to crush them. Excuse me, was that a Pokemon? Isn't there a Pokemon that looks exactly like that? time left. Yeah, let's just not be greedy. <laughs> what? Silver. What do I get for gold, other than bragging rights? Let's do it again. I just want to find out what you get for gold. If it's something significant, I'll go for gold. But otherwise, it's just... I'm guessing you have to do this hitless. And quick. Yeah, we're not losing 500 points. Oh, you don't get bonus points for doing combos? Okay. Sneaky. What? what? Was I supposed to do that? All right, whatever. There's no benefit to that. No! Alright, just keep going. Ah! Oh. No, I'm retrying. <laughs> that, that, uh, yeah, that sealed my fate, though. I got a couple of coins out of it. See, I overcomplicated it. All I had to do was that. Damn it. I actually tried this time. Is there already only a minute left? Jeez.
Not even close. That's like only 15k. I think I did worse than before. 22k. Oh, okay, better. Uh, one more time. One more time. One more time. I think if I get that path to the right that I missed, then I'll get it. I don't get how you're supposed to do that quickly. I think you just run. Maybe I'm not running. Maybe that's all it is. I'm just casually strolling. Ah! <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Definitely making my inner child stubborn. Just because it's a Kirby game. I feel like I should do better. Ah, ha, ha. Okay, there it is. There it is. There it is. Kirby learnt to run. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> Surely I can still get it without that. I keep forgetting about that path. Oh. No, okay, now we're definitely restarting. <laughs> okay, this is the one, 100%. I'm getting it this time. No, it's okay. I'm still, I'm still up. Still technically up. I can't believe that happened. Oh, oh. why am I getting so worked up over this? wasn't quick. It still worked, but whatever. Ah, oh, what? No, this might not be good. I made a bad choice. Close. Last try. 
<laughs> last try. It's like less than a thousand. Ugh, if I would have gotten that gold, I would have gotten it. I just messed up at the end. Okay. I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna get it done. This is it. This has to be it. Alright, there it is. Gold Star. Do I get anything for it, or is it just like a sense of satisfaction? <laughs> Was that worth the time? I mean, you get you get to see like a nice golden thing above it, sure, but like, was it really worth the time? Do I really want to subject myself to doing this for every single one of those? Haven't decided yet. It's like 20 minutes of uh, my time for a one-up. Now, I know Kirby games tend to be a lot on the shorter side, so I don't want to get through this in one stream, <laughs> but I'll do a bit more of this. Also, hey, Gammy, what's up? How's it going? Now I should be expert swordsman. Sound effect. My star. You went to bed early and the local junkies woke you up with their yelling. It's coming in the street. Oh no. Is it like Bogan junkies or just like a different kind of junkie? Always get into an argument about something random. Mm -hmm. 
The Bergen type that always yells about something. Right, so the ones that you see at train stations in Melbourne and Sydney. Interesting. I need flame power. No, there's that animator that, like, has a perfect depiction. Like, Damo and Darren. It's probably the most accurate depiction I've seen of, like, a train station here, ever. Okay, but I don't really have a firepower, so hang on. There we go. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. The street you live in is just down from the train station. Okay, that explains it. <laughs> the argument's usually just over, like, cigarettes. Or just something nonsensical. The most nonsensical argument I've heard a couple of junkies have. One of them swore that uh, when they went to a public bathroom, that the flush on the uh, the urinal was automated. And the other junkie was like, just refuting that. Down to the point of like, conspiracy theory stuff. Like, you know, believing that if there's such a thing as automated urinals, then it's like the machine uprising. It was just absolutely insane, the connection they were making. That uh, automated urinals lead to the end of society. And they could be spying on us whilst uh, we use these robotic urinals. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> it was a really unhinged conversation, and it was one of those things that I... I tried not to look or listen, but it was just... Man. Ah! Wasn't fair. Mm -hmm. It makes sense though, what the robotic urinal argument being the end of society as we know it, and that the government is Loki spying on us through your robotic urinals? I mean, I don't know, how many fancy urinals have you seen in your lifetime? Ones that you believe that are robotic? Now that you think about it, I mean, none. I, I think, I think what would have happened, and I don't know what park they were referring to, because I, I can't think of a place that would match the description they were talking about, but like, the only thing I could think of is like, maybe one of the fancy Japanese toilets made their way to Australia somehow. But... It was, it was just, it was such a bizarre conversation. I'm sure one of them sincerely saw, like, a robotic urinal. I don't question that, it's just the other one taking it to, to the extreme of, uh... Like, it being a government thing. <laughs> just... It all, they made it sound like this was the, uh... The introduction of Skynet, you know? Like, that's how the war starts on humanity. 
with robotic urinals. Also, hello. Is it El Lindor? Or is it just El Lindor? I don't know. I can't help but see the El Lindor. Either way, welcome. Hey. Must be a heck of a conversation <laughs> to come into. Skynet likes watching people poop. <laughs> That's... I almost feel tempted to add that to, to the fun facts BRB screen. From time to time, sometimes chat says something that I find funny. <laughs> if you want to be immortalized in that screen, I'll, I'll be happy to, like, quote you. Copy ability room one unlocked. Alright, cool. Oh yeah, that's the healing sleepy thing. You were just paraphrasing what I said. Yeah, but like... It's one of those things where... If this was philosophy... It's like you would still get quoted, right? You know what I mean? Like, you could say that the origins came from my way of thinking, but really you perfected the thought. It's like, you know, the great scholars, they... They try to finish what each other have been saying. So like I'm, I may have, you know, started it, but the person that's going to get quoted in books one day is, is you, not me. <laughs> T1000, but the T stands for toilet. <laughs> the toilet 1000. And it just has Arnie's voice. Wow, I'm a toilet sent from the future. Protect. John, is it Sean Connor or John Connor? I haven't seen that movie in ages. <laughs> ah! Just if I want to do the impersonation, I just make that sound. It's John Connor, All right. I don't know why I said Sean Connor. John Connor. Give me your clothes, your boots, and your stool sample. Wow. <laughs> oh no. That's the best impersonation? No, come on, it's not that good. I've done some horrendous impersonations the past couple of days. <laughs> that one and like my I don't even know which Beatle member I'm trying to impersonate, but like I just make it I just do a Beatles impersonation as well. Not a good one, but it's it's there. I guess I just try to sound like a fancy British person. I don't know. Oh, I see. Uh, we're in a band, you know. It was just the four of us in a band, and uh, we used to have a thrash every now and then. And the poor George, he uh, had a bit of an acid trip, you know? Alright, that I, I lost it, but like the way I enter it is just... What did I do? I wasn't paying attention, and I missed it. Ah, uh, you know, because I was in the band. Uh, yeah. It's okay, I got another chance. Do I just have to be- I think I just have to be quick. Yeah, there we go. Oh, 
I love these transformations of the little statues that it becomes. <laughs> Chat, this might be the first time in a while that I think we've scared some someone new off just by the conversation. Oh dear. It's okay. Well, I guess I didn't like being in a band. You know? It's all love here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ah. It's alright, it's just a one-up. That is quite the power curb. Is that just... just guessing, that's it. <laughs> okay. I guess I chose correctly. Getting something to eat, late night snack. Alright, enjoy, dude. Yeah, I don't really do many impressions. I, I, I think I'm pretty horrendous at most. I think the only... the only good one I've really ever had is uh, Wario, and I guess by <laughs> by an unintentional thing like Golem from Lord of the Rings, but other than that, like I'm not really talented when it comes to voice. Just have to stick to my regular regular old voice. For you. Flabim. Does this destroy everything? No. Oh, it does, it does, it does, okay. Holy crap, you can control it. Ultimate destructive power, yes. I'm going back. This is one of these things where I firmly believe there's a secret here. I mean, kinda. Stop! I gotta hurry! Oh, I can reload, that's cool. Probably not necessary. the void.
Let me just make sure I get everything. Seem to be the intended way. Oh, no, there's a delay. Ah, uh, look, it's fine. I'm gonna go with Al. Alright, I mean, did better than last time. Not as good as the first time. This reminds me of Navi. I mean, I could say I do a Navi impersonation, but not really. The sand challenge. <laughs> Maybe not today. Maybe next time. We'll see. Oh, no, I, I like this power. Give me, give me the rock power. I enjoy rock power. Seeing the various rock transformations is fun. I thought there was more to this, there isn't. You spent so long trying to get somewhere in Metro, look forward to seeing how you do in that dumb spot. Okay. Noted. I mean, it's gonna be one of the two things. It's either going to be something that's convoluted enough that I get it the first time, because that's just how I work, or it's going to be something simple that I overcomplicate it. <laughs> so. It can only go one of the one of two ways. It's not convoluted, it's just tedious movement. Okay. 
I mean, I'm, I, I have my, I have my, I have my gamer moments where sometimes I do things that people are like, wow, I can't believe you did that first try. I destroy cannon. No, okay. Do this. Uh oh. <laughs> ah. Oops. All right, let's get the Beyblade power. That was close. I find Beyblades to be like one of the, the funniest franchises to appear in a very long time. Just making spinning tops into battle things. Just, I don't know if it was in the interest of selling toys or not, but I do find it kind of hysterical in hindsight. Did anyone here, um, have Bionicles be, like, a part of their childhood? Bionicles weren't part of my childhood, uh, but I got them for my brothers growing up. So they were, they were presents for uh, my brothers quite a few times. They were awesome. They were cool, but something that I learnt, uh, recently... So Bionicles basically saved LEGO. They were, they almost went bankrupt. Because they tried, uh, some other idea that was very similar to Bionicles, but it was... It was very weird. Um, and I guess it just wasn't well marketed properly, and it was just a bit of a disaster. And so, what they earned from Bionicles basically saved the company, more or less. Um... There's, there's a few documentaries on, on YouTube about it, but, um... The one to check out in particular is on the toy that failed, which was Galador. They tried to make a TV show out of it as well. You know, they had big plans for it and it just it flopped colossally. Because it was one of those things that they tried to make it like a sci-fi show. And the person who wrote the show just kind of wrote it without budget in mind. So they had to make concessions, obviously. But um, the loose description of Galador is like um it was basically form your own action hero so conceptually similar to Bionicles right where you would build a, an action figure except it was a human and it had interchangeable parts it's so like you would have a human head and then you'd be able to give it different parts like that was the kid's power but I mean if you want to go down a rabbit hole uh, check check that out, and then the uh, documentary of Bionicles, because it's kind of fascinating how they saved Lego as a company. Like, if it wasn't if it wasn't bi for Bionicles, Lego would have uh, most definitely gone bankrupt. But uh, in the context of gaming, they made a a Galador game. Which, uh, released pretty much after the, the toys were doomed. So it's one of those things that the developers of this game, um, one of them went to, I think it was like a Lego theme park, and saw that basically these toys that they were making a game for were in bargain bins, like, to the point where they were giving them away. Like, if you spent X amount of dollars, you would get a free one, so... That wouldn't have been a good feeling, <laughs> putting all your effort into this game that you knew the line of toys was already doomed, so. But apparently the game was is fun. Like, if you play the game, it's not a bad game. It's just 
ultimately it's for a doomed franchise. So, anyway. For those that are into, like, random trivia or, uh, just useless pieces of information that you're going to retain, there, there you go, there's something for you. I do like watching stuff like that, um, just, like, weird little stories that are kind of, like, either failures in marketing or just something from a gaming perspective going wrong. I do like watching that stuff. This just this just makes me want to play Donkey Kong. Oh yeah, and the best part, the uh the transformation. So the way they explained it was the kid gains these powers to be able to swap his body parts. And uh the terminology for this power is called glinching. It was just this really weird sounding word. Hang on. I'm gonna see if I can find images of this so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, I found it. Alright, so... Let me just, uh... Put this on screen. <laughs> so... You're, you're ready for some, some nightmare fuel? Check this out. Alright, so this was Galador. This is what the feature of it was. It was basically, yeah. This is, this is glinching. It's like you can take pieces of the kid and kind of just make your own character. So, I mean, look at, look at that. That was, um, McDonald's had toys for Galador and they look like this. But, I mean, you could do... This is how the figure's supposed to look, right? So, you can see some similarities with Bionicles, but then it also allowed you to do stuff like like this. So... <laughs> it's an interesting watch. I, I recommend it. Anyway. It's, it's my little piece of trivia for the night. Awful. Yeah, I mean, especially if you grew up with Bionicles. Like, you will hate, hate it when you see it. But it's, it's a fascinating piece of history, nonetheless. It just makes you appreciate Bionicles more. That's what I was trying to do. I always thought Bionicles were cool. But I remember, yeah, the first lot that I got my brothers. I think they still even have theirs. That's the wild part. Um, but they enjoyed them quite a bit and it became like an annual thing, pretty much. Birthday, Christmas, it was Bionicles. Oh. Okay, I have to... Hang on. How to, how, how to beam shoot. Like that. Okay, like that. There we go. Apparently not good enough. Can I just do it through the wall? What? <laughs> what am I doing wrong, yo? Okay, think. It 
it's a time thing, so I thought this would buy me enough time. It's not enough time. Okay. Uh, what do? Yeah, let's just see what's in here to begin with. Maybe there's a power that I can use here. Nope, no power. Hmm. All right, can't go down here. What, what am I missing here? Oh, you can hit it through a wall. All right, never mind. There you go. Overcomplicated, a simple thing. How this looks visually. Oh, can't. Okay. It's gonna be some other way up there. Ah, there we go. I still have the torch with me. Now. I don't think I need it. <laughs> I was super, super just tempted just to say. What if I brought it with me? Oh, but like, hang on. I think the animation for this is really cool. No! Oh no! What have I done? Give me it back! Can I get another one? Ah! I don't get the hot dogs. Okay, no, I get it back. I still am gonna check back there, just in case. This power is great. Aha! See? Okay, now, the peas. Okay, that 
works, I guess. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. What do you mean water doesn't stop the fireball? Whoa. Stealth curb. This is cool. Okay. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Hey, where did my stealth gem go? Oh, whatever. I think I might have been limited in use. because we have rope. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Ooh, we got the superpower. That could be unstoppable. Oh my god, I thought of a good stream title. Curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> I might call it that next time. <laughs> I mean, if you understand the reference, good. If you don't, well... I mean, at the very least, the going live notification will be that. <laughs> Good. Well done. Can slow it down. Sword. Trickier now. damage. Good luck. Oh, 
Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> End of stage. Ah, oh, that was a poor effort. <laughs> Not a good effort. And we arrive at, uh, yeah. Boss stage two. Yeah, I mean, we'll worry about that later. <laughs> For now. Uh. You know what? I want water. I like, I like this ability. Just the surfing aspect is neat. Mr. Duta. <laughs> okay. I definitely chose the right power here. <laughs> it doesn't do as much damage, but I mean, you can spam it. Uh-oh. Dance. Kirby's got moves. And if you think about it, Kirby's a little cocky. Do like, doesn't really win gracefully, just does the victory dance on the bodies of slain enemies. <laughs> You did it, Kirby. My star cutter has its right wing back in place. Once we find all the parts and this baby can fly again, I'll take you on a trip to visit my homeworld. I come from a distant land. It lies at the end of the interdimensional tunnel connected to your planet. It's really far away, but the lore is a beast. It can get us in there in no time once it's fixed. I do hope you'll take me up on my generous offer. Okay, well... Wait, how do I... Does this autosave? I think it autosaves, but I, I'm gonna... Say, but, uh, yeah. As I don't want to do this in one sitting. To the lower mode selection. Yeah, okay, this is, this is what it means. Yeah, so we're already a quarter of the way through it, and it's only been an hour and something. Almost two hours, so we're going to put a pin in, pin in it, and uh, we'll pick it up again tomorrow. I'll play a bit more tomorrow, but uh, 
it, Kirby games are short. Kirby games are usually short, so that's why, like, um, with the exception of the last one, uh, they're usually, like, about six hours long, give or take, so, at best. Anyway, I'm gonna take a small intermission, and we're gonna come back and do some Animal Crossing for the rest of the evening, so, yeah, give me a couple of minutes to set that up slash stretch, but, uh, if you're here for Kirby, we'll do more of it tomorrow. So, or if you're watching this later on YouTube, thanks for clicking and watching, and yeah, if you're enjoying the playthrough, let me know, get in touch with a comment, or do the thumbs up thing. Always like hearing from people. Alright, bye YouTube.